So, okay, so let's go select your, your terrain object. Go to Redshift OBJ. If you don't have this tab, by the way, select your object and then click Object Parameter, so OBJ Plus. So that's going to be in the Redshift toolbar. If you don't have the Redshift toolbar, click Plus, Shelves, enable it over here. So then you get the Redshift toolbar. Anyway, so if you have that, go to Tessellation and enable Tessellation and then enable displacement. So right now this is not really gonna look any different because I mean, we didn't really do much in our material, right? But what this will do uh, is it will subdivide this mesh during render time. So you know what subdividing is, right? So if we were to go in here and we'll do subdivide, just look at the wireframe. So you can see if we do this, we have this many point, uh, polygons. And then if we subdivide it, we get more polygons. And then if we were to subdivide it again, we get even more polygons, etc., etc. But if you do it during render time, it's actually a lot more efficient. So what Redshift has, it has screen space adaptive. Uh, and then we have minimum edge length and maximum subdivisions. So essentially, uh, it's gonna just do uh, like do the, it's gonna look at the sub let the geometry in sort of a two D space, and then stuff that's gonna be further away from the camera or out of view is gonna be subdivided less, and the minimum edge length is gonna be the minimum length that the uh, the edge so this thing needs to be. So if you make it lower, you're going to tell it like it needs to have more minimum detail. So let's leave it at four for now. We're probably going to put it to two uh, a little bit later. Um, and then the maximum subdivisions will be, well, the maximum amount it can subdivide. So like, and again, like for example, if we have, so we middle mouse, this is 100,000. Uh, polygons right now, if we, if we subdivide it, 600,000, if we were to subdivide it again, it's probably going to think for quite a little bit. And hopefully that, okay, so then we get 2 million. So you can see like that it would, it, it would do that on render time. And the great thing about doing it on render time is that we can get a lot of cool, uh, cool details on our geometry that there, that are not there. So let's demonstrate that by making a putting a displacement node. So let's close some of this stuff. Plug it in into displacement. And then on here on texture, what we can do is we can, I, I'm gonna use a maxwell noise. So this is one of the noises that's not in uh, Redshift 2.6. If you're using 2.6, you're gonna use the Redshift noise. And you can see this also has a whole bunch of options, but the good thing about the maxwell noise is that it has a lot of presets. So if we want to look at how this, what this noise looks like, by the way, we can just let's um, just plug our noise directly into surface. You can see now we can sort of see this noise pattern and we can just play around with it and see what it looks like. And this, these noises by default will sort of, uh, where you can say how they should protect. So we can use a UV uh, or it by default, it does triplanar. So what triplanar is, is essentially it just projects texture from the top from, from here and then from here, and it sort of blends them together. And it can do that in bold space or in object space. So in this case, I don't really matter that much. Um, if you have a rest position, you can also do it in reference, but you don't have that. So anyway, so these are these are the noises, and like these noises have a whole bunch of different options you can like. Th that's why I really like these Maxwell noises. So these used to be in Cinema 4D, and then Redshift uh, was bought by Maxon, and then they, they decided to integrate all these presets inside of uh, well inside of Redshift. So kind of like this Poxon noise, to make it look bigger. Like again, you could also use these just regular redshift noises. And then you could just play around with those settings and 
distortion, frequency scale, complexity, like turbulence, whatever. So you, you can also use that um, and then play around with length. You have to scale here. So you can also use that. I just like these Maxwell noises uh, because they have a whole bunch of like presets that I can easily just pick from, do some settings and mix them together. Uh, and they just look pretty good by default. So anyway, so let's disconnect that and let's plug it into displacement instead. I'm gonna plug it in. Gonna say that it's gonna preparing for ray tracing. And what you can see is that I get a whole bunch of spikes. It's because our skill is quite high, but you can already see that it's working. So let's make this displacement scale a lot smaller. So 0.3. And you can see, by the way, the detail isn't added to these pieces yet because we haven't told those to subdivide. And let's just leave that for now because that's, that's actually quite fine. So you can just play around with how you like this to look. So I guess we could make it a little bigger. Um, let's make it what it looks like. And then, as you can see, the white parts will extrude more, and the other parts will extrude less. And what we could do is maybe do another displacement. Maybe, by the way, let's also plug in our material, so we get at least. Uh, on it and on the material i guess let's make the reflection roughness a bit higher so and like you can see this will basically tell us how much should it reflect so we can i guess turn down the reflection and then turn up the roughness a little bit and we're gonna do some more with the color stuff later we're not gonna do that much actually but uh, a little bit we we don't really need I mean, it's going to be a moon-like landscape anyway, so doesn't really need that much interesting stuff. Uh, anyway, so what we want to do is we want to make another displacement. Maybe just let's copy and paste this one. Let's hold Y. What if you hold Y, you get like the arrow, the knife, and then you can sort of slice stuff. So just so you know, mm, and let's make a displacement blender. So that will allow us to blend multiple displacement maps together. So the base input will be this one, that we already had. And then in the second input, let's be this one. And let's make another noise. So let's plug it in. Now by default, I don't think we're gonna see much yet because the blend weight is to zero. So let's configure our noises to sort of uh, be sort of layer details. So let's disconnect this displacement again. Let's plug in our first noise. Let's make it a lot bigger. So let's have this one be like our big scale. And I'm thinking maybe this one is even too detailed for like big scale. So maybe we want something different. Maybe we want a big scale to be something like this. Change the contrast a little bit. Oh, and put it into the wrong thing. Let's put it in this placement. Maybe let's increase our placement a little bit. Sometimes when I'm late, when I'm like impatient, I'm gonna press the render button again. It's just force of habit. Actually, it's quite stupid that I'm doing that because it just actually slows it down. Um, anyway, we can use this to sort of give like large detail. All right, so this, those would be like large details. Maybe this is a little bit extreme. And then we'll just give an overall sort of uh, detail to it. But you don't, you see, we don't really have uh, any smaller details in there. Probably what we could do, 
let's disconnect this again plug our other noise in there so this one is going to be a little bit smaller let's say that we want that one to be like our smaller details maybe we want it to be like a little smaller put this placement in Okay, so now what we can do is we have a blend weight here. So if we put that to the second one, then it's just gonna be using our second one instead. So you can see the second one has a lot more details. Let me just look at render. You can see our render is a little bit noisy. It's a little bit hard to see. Uh, and the resolution is a little bit low. Maybe what we wanna do is go up a couple of levels. Let's change our render cam to be 1920 by 1080 because it's set to 1280 by 720 by default. We don't do that 1080. So let's press render again. Okay, so we can see a little bit better. Okay, so those are the small details. We can go in there. Uh, probably we don't want to just add this. So you could go in the middle if you want. And it's going to blend like right now. It's going to blend about half of the first one. And then the other half of the second one. You see it takes a little bit of time to sort of compute all of that stuff. You could also put it to additive, and then instead of mixing between, it's going to add it on top by this, uh, by that strength. So if we turn that on. Looks kind of cool. Maybe we can add another one in. Let's just look at our surface. Uh, let's look at this. Use we have a look stipple. So this one has like a wavy type pattern, which is kind of nice. We wanted to make it a little bit smaller. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of nice. So that's. Put that one in. And you might be thinking, what if I want more than just these? Well, you can you can also mix other stuff. You can also, for example, um, just vector mix things. So what that will do is let's just let me plug in uh, this one in displacement. Let's disconnect this one. So now it's going to add our first noise again to displacement it takes a little bit All right, so what you could do is you could factor mix because i mean this is just a uh, color right so we could uh, factor mix then we could for example take another thing so for example stipple that we have could say mix that one in Point five. The only thing is that we then don't won't have individual controls over the amount of displacement that each each thing gets. You can see now we get sort of this wavy type thing, which I guess is kind of cool. Um, maybe we want it to be a little bit less influenced. Point two. I think maybe. And just keep it like that. Let's have a look what that looks like. Maybe a little less even. I used that one in my main scene, but 
Actually, if I'm just looking at it with just this sunlight, I'm not completely digging it too much. Maybe if it's, uh, maybe you can use it on the rock slider or something. And let's mix in a small displacement. Okay, I think I'm kind of liking that. Um, it's a little bit white now. So I guess let's plug in our material. And in this material, I mean, we have color here that we can use. So we could, for example, make it red, like white, like it is. We could make it a little bit grayish. See, we get these sort of nice details. Hmm, maybe what we want to do is just make white. And let's do a curvature. So curvature is going to measure the curvature of the surface. And that's going to be after it's subdivided, actually. So after it's subdivided and displaced. Um, and then we can use that to, for example, color our, uh, our, our ground. So let's do a color, absolute color. Let's make two. Let's do vector mix. That's the one that we had before, right? Uh, let's put it into a fuse color. Let's make one color white and one color black. Now it's just gonna show like a black color. And let's put curvature in. Let's just make it progressive. Um, Oh, yeah, we need to make this one white. Now you can see we get these sort of bumps. So right now it's measuring, uh, it's like a measuring quite a big radius. So it's going to have quite a big radius. If we want this color to come in maybe in like the smaller details, then we, what we could say is like maybe make it 0 0.02. Nine. Let's make it concave. Okay, so I don't like the complete darkness of the whole thing. I guess something like this looks kind of kind of okay. Uh, you can see it looks weird now on these rocks. We haven't turned on displacement on these rocks yet, so I guess what we could do is uh, RDR rock explode. Let's turn off our RTR. Let's go in there and enable tessellation and displacement. So enable tessellation, enable displacement. Let's render. So we still get quite a lot of corners in that one. I think uh, we're probably we're gonna make a separate material for the rocks anyway. But I'm still thinking that I'm not gonna do complete white on the second material. Let's make it in like this. Okay, and probably we want to turn down the displacement on our rocks. So you have control over it on your geometry as well. So you can say, I want the displacement on these ones to be a little bit smaller. If you want to see the difference between that, you could click this thing here, take snapshot. And now let's make it, for example, we'll make it two. Let's close the snapshot thing. And let's have it render. Make another snapshot. Mm -hmm. You see, we could go back and forth between the two. 
So the details are kind of nice, but I mean, it's expanding out way too much. I'm going to say 0 0.6. So we're probably going to be fine. Okay, so let's keep that material for now. We're probably gonna tweak it later when we have done more of the lighting, but let's, let's add our rocks in. Uh, let's see what it will look like with these rocks. 